Hi, I'm Rachel Gingell. Welcome to my shop. Today I'm going to freshen up the engine on my Farmall Cub, so let's get to work. I am only doing a little engine refresh today since my rear main sail and my front seal are not leaking. Um, this tractor just smokes really bad. It has horribly low compression and when I want to start it I have to either pull start it or turn it with a hand crank it won't start on its own so we're gonna do a valve job we're gonna um, put new rings on the pistons and just freshen up that motor so that it will start on its own I already have the um, ground cable removed from my battery I turned off the gas at the sediment bowl and then removed the fuel line you can see I took these parts off the top here I took the wires off the back of my headlights. I also drained my radiator and my oil. So now we're ready to lift this hood off the tractor and get to work. I'm taking the last nut off of my manifold here. For these center two, you do have to use a box end wrench. You can't use a socket wrench like I can use on the final two, but you need to get all four of those nuts off so that you can free up the manifold. Down here by the carburetor, you have linkages for both your choke and your throttle. There's some cotter pins on the back of them that you'll need to pull off and then your linkages will come out. Up here, this pin just comes out and that cable will be loose. Let me set that aside. I'm gonna pull this off and then I take that last linkages off right back here. There we go. I labeled my spark plug wires, one, two, three, four. Number one's always closest to the radiator. That way when I reassemble, it'll be very easy to put them back in time. You can do the same if you don't have stickers like that. You could try like a lumber crayon might show up on the black wires. Move those out of the way. Then I'll take out all four of my spark plugs like so. Now I'm ready to take the head off of the tractor. There is a bracket right here that connects to the neck with your generator. Pull that out. Then you can move this a little bit forward and take the belt off of your generator. Then it will lean back towards me to expose all of the head bolts underneath there. Now you can take all of the head bolts off of your tractor. I have most of mine already removed. I'll just finish these up here. I did break one of my head bolts here. You can see that that's broken off. Uh, hopefully that doesn't happen to you. Work carefully. Uh, so hopefully they didn't get tightened up by the last person before you. I think that's my last head bolt. I'm sure you notice when you take yours apart that there are short and long head bolts. You take them all out. Then I can just use a plastic mallet like this one, not a hard steel hammer, and that will loosen up your head. I have my radiator hose loosened. Notice that my air cleaner is coming with the head. There's my head gasket underneath there. I'm gonna to try to leave that there. I'm just gonna set this down and then you can see that my, the top end of my engine is exposed. You can see the valves here and the pistons. Next, we're gonna hop down to the bottom of the engine and disassemble down there. I'm taking this last nut and bolt out. There are a few down here that hold in this bell housing cover. Once I have those out, the cover will pull down just like so. And that exposes the last three bolts back here that hold the pan in. You're gonna need a swivel to reach in there and be able to access those bolts. They're a little difficult, but you can get your swivel in there and then they'll loosen up and then you can use a regular impact wrench for the rest of those for your pan to release. This is my last bolt here for the pan. I'm just gonna give this a little tap there to loosen it up and then it will drop down like so. I'm taking both of these bolts off so that we can get the valve cover door off of the side of the engine here. I'm just gonna use a screwdriver to kind of pry that off and it's a little tight with these hydraulic lines here. If yours is equipped with hydraulics, you're gonna have the same problem is me, but let me, it's loose. I think I'm stuck on the gasket here. Let me try to just get the door and leave the gasket behind for now. Here we go. So the door's off. Next I'll get this gasket off and that shows us all the valves. I'm down on the bottom of the engine, but I have this rod out of the engine to show you what's happening so you can see a little easier. Underneath here, there are two lock nuts, which I'll remove with a socket wrench. With those removed, you can pull that off. 
When it's in the engine, you're gonna have to really wiggle that off. It won't come off as easily as mine does here outside of the engine. But that's gonna come off, and once it's off, you can use the rubber handle end of the hammer to tap that up and drive the piston out of the block. Now, when you take them out, you need to notice that there's a number two and a number two on both ends here. And also notice what hole you take that piston out of so that when you reassemble, you can get that all back together how it was to start with. So now I'm gonna take these lock nuts off, just like I said. That one's loose, I'm just gonna pull it the rest of the way with my finger because I'm getting caught on the pickup there. <laughs> with the end of my wrench. Take that off the rest of the way. Of course it's, there we go. Remember I told you it would come off a little harder in the black then, <laughs> out of the black. Okay, now I'm just gonna drive it up. Get those nuts out of the way. It's wiggling. I'm gonna push it up the rest, the rest of the way. It's hard to, Aim. There we go. The piston's pushing up, so I'll step up and get it the rest of the way out of the hole. I'm using a digital caliper to get a good measurement. Mine reads 1.497. Yours might read differently, but you have to get a good measurement so that you can order the right size bearings. I'm ready to pull my piston out and get another measurement before ordering parts. So here I have my caliper that I'm again going to measure the skirt of the piston. Mine measures at 2.625, which would be standard bore for this Farmall Cub engine. If you measure yours and you have 6.35 instead of 2.5, then that would mean that you need to get 10 over rings on your standard pistons. The Cub's the only engine that's like that. If you get 4.5, then you would need 20 overs. 5.5, five, you need 30 overs, and so on. You get the uh, point there. So you have to measure your piston before you order the rings, since that could vary depending on what's been done to your engine in prior years. And it's important that you get the right size rings for the pistons that are in your tractor. When you have your rings, it's important to do a second double check and make sure that you did indeed order the right size. So you can just slide your ring right into the hole and slide it far enough down so that you're past that top lip there. Maybe a quarter inch in would be good. And then you can use a feeler gauge to make sure that that gap in the ring is between seven thousandths and seventeen thousandths. That's where it should be. Mine are like that so it confirms that I do indeed have standard bore with standard rings for these pistons and that's what we're going to put on. I am ready to remove the valves from my block. You can see that I have a valve compressor hooked up. You'll need a compressor like that to perform this task. With the valves compressed, I can use a magnet to pull those keepers off. There's two keepers, so I'll pull those off. Looks like this one's really tight. Let me get a screwdriver in there and see if I can just pry that off. Here we go. Most of the time they'll pull off with magnets. Once in a while, they'll be stuck like that. Once you get your keepers off, you can go ahead and pull your valve compressor off. Oops, let me raise that up a little bit higher and get it out of there. Then use that small screwdriver again just to pry your whole valve right out. Your next step is to remove your springs. So with your lifters in the down position, you can use a pair of pliers to push up. This will be reused and then you can remove your spring out of there. We'll get new springs. Now I'm ready to take the guides out of my block. I have a tool set up here which will just drive the guide out. So I'm gonna set that down the hole where my valves were. And then I have a nut here which I'm gonna put on the bottom. I'm just gonna get that started and then I'll use a wrench down here on the bottom to hold my nut. And then I'll use a socket on the top to drive that out. And as I do, the guide will come with it so that we can replace the guides. Got that tightened up. Let me get my wrench on there. My nut is up into the block so I can no longer reach it with my wrench. Therefore, I'm just gonna use a pry bar here up at the top and I'll pry the guide all the way out. There it is. So I'll do that on all eight holes.
When you are ready to make this repair on your own tractor, you're going to need some new parts. All the parts on this table are available on my website, farmtractorrepair.com, and you can purchase those there. Your purchase on my site helps to fund future tractor tutorials. Now there are some specifics about some of these parts that you need to know, so let me roll through them really quick with you. Shown here is the entire engine gasket set. You could purchase this, but there are some pieces in this gasket set that I will not use today and show you how to install. However, if you want to do more steps than what I outline in this video, this would be an economical way for you to purchase the entire gasket set. If you only want to do a few parts, you can purchase just a head gasket set, which has the head gasket and a few other pieces. You could purchase the tappet cover gasket individually, the um, oil pan gasket individually. There's lots of gasket options for you depending on how much work you want to do on your own tractor. If you discover that your head is cracked or warped, you may want to purchase a brand new head rather than trying to have your existing head resurfaced. Here we have new head bolts. These are all the stainless steel bolts that you need, so they're really good quality rather than putting your old nasty ones back in the tractor. You can purchase new spark plugs and a new filter, oil filter with the gasket. It's important that you get a filter that has the gasket with it. Here we have some new wrist pin bushings if you want to install those. Here's a new pulley. Here's a new drain plug. We also offer both the uh, rod bearings and the main bearings here. Let's talk about piston sets. You can purchase a standard piston like this one and put that in your tractor. Or if you want to add more power to your Farmall Cub, you could buy a pop-up style piston like this one. When you purchase a set of four pistons, it does come with the rings as well as the wrist pins and that would be purchased as a set. Or if you only want to put new rings on your piston, you can buy the rings individually for whatever size piston you have in your tractor. Up here is a valve train kit. You can purchase all of these parts together, meaning the intake and the exhaust valves, the springs, the keepers, and the guides. However, if you only need to purchase a few of those parts, they're also offered individually to you. Right here, I have the tools for installing and removing the guides. These are made by me, and I know that you could probably make something like this if you have access to a lathe, but if you don't have access to a lathe, I'll just make one for you and you can order it that way. Lastly, if you need some specifications beyond what is shown in the video, you can purchase a brand new manual. Or if you decide you wanna do a complete engine rebuild, not just an engine refresh, we offer a DVD which shows you all the steps for the engine rebuild process. So when you're ready to purchase those parts, go to farmtractorrepair.com. I had my new guides in the freezer for about 24 hours and now they're ready to drop in. If you put them in the freezer, it helps them slide in there just a little bit easier and then you can work quickly. This is a tool which you can use for the installation. Make sure that you have it straight and then you can just drive it all the way down until it is flush. Okay, I'm happy with how that looks. Let me explain to you what I did there. Here's my old guide and my old valve. Sometimes these will get really sloppy and when that happens, you'll lose power. So that would be why you'd want to replace your guides. You may have been told by other mechanics that it's not important to replace the guide, just do new valves. However, as these engines age more and more and get more and more use on them, nowadays it's really important that you do go ahead and replace those guides because they do get worn there and get sloppy around the valve. So it's really simple with this tool. Just make sure you put them in the freezer. Getting them cold will help them go in a lot easier for you. The next step is to use some lapping compound on your valves before you put them in. I have some lapping compound. If you've never done this before, you just slide this around the very top of your valve here. Make sure that it's all the way around and then you drop it into your hole, into your new guide like that. And then you just use your lapping stick like this, spin it. You can kind of hear that grit going around. I'm gonna lift it up, turn it about a quarter a turn, do it again, all the way around. Lift it up, do it again, until you've done your whole entire valve. There we go. Once you've done the whole entire valve, you'll see a little bit of a groove there where it's setting onto your seat. You can wipe off all that lapping compound and then drop your valve in. I have my springs and retainers in all of the valves, as you can see. The next step is to put these little keepers in. They're a little tricky. I like to just take a little bit of grease and put that on the inside so that when I stick it up in there, it stays put. So you put it around the bottom of the valve and I have mine too far down. So I'm just gonna take a little screwdriver and push it up a little bit, get it underneath there. There, that's where it will hold. And then I do the same thing 
for the second keeper on the other side. And then I'll let the valve compressor drop down. Do the same steps for all of the valves. Okay, it's back there. It's up far enough. So now I'm ready to drop the compressor and we'll be all set. Now it's time to adjust the valves. The book suggests that you adjust this to 17,000. So I have my feeler gauge ready. I'm gonna stick one wrench down in the bottom and then my second one on top. If I move it this way, it makes the gap bigger. If I move it towards me, it makes the gap smaller. So you can just keep moving that wrench until you have a good adjustment there. You want this to be about 17 thousandths with a good amount of drag. I need to tighten mine up a little bit more. And we'll see if that does it. Still gonna give it one more little turn there. And that should be perfect. Yes, it is. I like the amount of drag that's there. So I'll do that on all eight of my valves. You want to make this adjustment when your lifter is in the down position, how I have mine right now. I am spreading some gasket sealant around the edge here. I'm gonna put my cork, new cork gasket on, and then I'll be able to put this cover over the top of the valves. Just make sure the sealant's all the way around there. Just helps the gasket stick and make sure that we get a good seal like that. Then I'm gonna slide this in here just like so, I'm gonna drop that down in there. Make sure that it's in the right position. And it looks good to me. And I'm just gonna get these started in there. These have to go in perfectly straight. There we go. We'll start with this oil control ring at the bottom. Just use your fingers on this ring and it'll slide down to that groove. And then you have the backers for it. Here is my opening right here. So I'm going to start about an inch past that and slide it around. That one stayed at the top. So this one's gotta to go to the bottom. I'm gonna go an inch on the other side of that opening and just trace it all the way around to the bottom, just like that. Your next ring is directional. So look for the bevel and the bevel goes down towards the bottom. These ones you do need to use the tool for, but be careful because you can overextend it and they will snap. So just, there we go. That looks good to me. And then our last one goes in the same way. Just like that. And slide that around so that the openings aren't on top of each other. And we'll be good to go. At the beginning of the video, I measured my rod journal, which told me that I needed to order two thousandths over rod bearings, which I have done. The book says that anything from 1.499 to 1.498 is standard. So you need to measure your own journal and measure your rod bearings in accordance to what size you need. When you have your new rod bearings, you just pop this out. See that little groove on the side there will loosen it up. Your old one will come out and then your new one will insert. Again, there's a groove here and that just drops in like so. You do the same on the other half and all of your other pistons. I'm using a hone like this one to clean all of my cylinder holes. I just want to remove the glaze before I'm ready to put the new pistons in. When you use the hone, make sure that you clean the entire hole, but that you aren't touching the journal that's down in the bottom of your engine still. When I'm finished, I'm going to use a rag with some cleaner on it to get all of the little dust particles out of there and I'll also clean the journal. I'm ready to drop my pistons into the block. You can see that I have my ring compressor on here. Notice that it is up probably about half an inch just so that I can get the pistons started without that compressor being in the way. Down here, I have the number one facing towards you. It's the camshaft side of the engine. The numbers on the rods always go towards the camshaft side and you have to get that right. Here I have the bolts and there is a flat spot. The flat spot always goes against the rod on both sides. So make sure that those are all in the proper position. With that, I'm going to put a little bit of assembler's lube here on the bottom. I'll swish that around and I'm gonna put the excess on the other half right there. And then I'm ready to drop this down into the hole. Just like that. Then I'm gonna use the handle end of this hammer to drive that down into place. 
going to go about that far and then I'm going to drop down to the bottom and make sure that everything's lined up down there and tighten up the bottom half. I am ready to put my rod cap on. You can see my number one is out here towards the camshaft side of the engine, just like the top of the rod. Got that in there and I'm going to tighten it up. My nut here is directional. Notice that the slats are seen by me. There we go. I'm going to tighten that up with a regular socket wrench first, and then I'm going to tighten it with a torque wrench, 16 foot pounds of torque. I'm going to get this one started, and then I'll go over to the other side and getting them all tightened up. All four of my pistons are in, and I reinstalled my oil plan with that cover that's on the side. Next up, up here on top, I want to clean out the holes where the head bolts go. So I have a tap on the end of my drill motor. I'm just gonna set this in here, get it started, and then I'll go very slowly so that I don't get cross-threaded and it doesn't bind, going as, about as far as the head bolts would go into the hole, and then I'll just back it right out, and I'll do that on all of the holes. Now is a great time to put a new filter in your engine. Since you're changing the oil, a good idea to put a new filter in at the same time. So take this old filter out and there's a gasket that is underneath this cap here that we'll replace. Just slides up through there and then this bolt drops all the way down through the filter just like that and then you got to get it straight into the hole. I cleaned up the surface of my head with a wire brush on the end of my drill. You should do the same and when you're finished, use a straight edge and set it on your head. Look underneath there and make sure that you can't see daylight. That's how you're gonna check to see if it's warped. Um, and if it is warped, then you'd want to replace it. You can sometimes get a head resurfaced, but the cub heads don't take to resurfacing as well as other models of heads that you may have done in the past. So best option would probably be just a replacement head if you have any warpage on yours. I sprayed my new head gasket with copper coat and I'm ready to lay it onto my head. This is directional and it will say this side up, but it's always the smooth side that goes towards the bottom and that rolled edge comes up towards the top. With that on there, now I'm ready to insert my head on top and I'm gonna to try to just get it all lined up before I set it down. Set that down right there. Looks fairly decent. Let's try to get some bolts lined up and see how we do. I am putting brand new bolts on. These ones are stainless steel. This is what my old bolts looked like. They were really bad. So if yours are bad, replace them. Notice that there are longer ones that go up here and shorter ones over here. And then you'll tighten them up to 45 pounds on your torque wrench. I'm just finishing up torquing my last head bolts. Whenever you torque your head bolts, make sure that you start in the center and work your way out in an X pattern. Tighten those all up to specification. I have all remains of my old manifold gasket removed and my new gaskets are set into place. I'm gonna set my manifold up there. I did put both my choke and throttle linkages into place. I'll tighten them with cotter pins in a minute. It's easier to set them back there while you have the carburetor pulled back. You can put your nuts onto your studs here. Just use those same nuts that you took off. Up here, I have all four of my spark plugs in and my wires are back on in the order that I took them off in so that it'll be timed correctly. I am adding 15 weight 40 engine oil to my motor. When I took the pan off the bottom of my tractor, I discovered a ton of sludge. So I cleaned that up and cleaned the whole entire engine. So now it's ready for some more modern oil. This cub does take four quarts of oil, so I'll pour that in. You can see up here, I have everything else hooked up. All my linkages are set to go. I put the belt back on the generator and attach that bracket that holds the generator into place. My next steps will be to add coolant and put the hood on, and then we'll start this tractor up. Again. Good. 
I'm so happy with the way that this tractor starts and runs. A big improvement over how it was. We still have this tractor on a six volt system, which is good for it to start up so easily. It doesn't smoke. I'm excited to use this tractor now that it's running so well. I hope that this tutorial is helpful to you when you want to freshen up the engine on your own farm all cub. Please purchase the parts at farmtractorrepair.com and while you're on the site, in addition to the parts, we also have a large assortment of licensed international harvester products.